Welcome. My name is Tom Bunker. I'm a long hauler and today I'm going to talk about my views on what is causing long COVID, i.e. persistent viral infection, and why manipulation of autophagy might allow us to prime our immune system to fight the persistent viral infection. First, there's growing evidence for viral persistence. In particular, uh, some extensive autopsy studies on a variety of people that died. Uh, uh, some died from acute COVID-19, others died from other things. And uh, some of these people had mild or asymptomatic COVID-19 infections. Uh, and 14 of these people died more than 30 days after symptom onset. And the autopsy study showed that the SARS-CoV-2 viral infection is widely distributed. And it's not just in the lungs, it's in many, many tissues outside of the lungs. They detected persistent SARS-CoV-2 RNA, which strongly suggests replicating virus uh, in the brain, the heart, the GI tract, the kidney, uh, endocrine tissue, reproductive tissue, muscle, skin, fat cells, peripheral nervous tissue, and in eyes for up to 230 days following symptom onset. This strongly indicates that SARS-CoV-2 can cause systemic infection and persist in the body for months. And personally, I believe this is the most likely explanation for all the long COVID symptoms. Just pick a cell type or tissue, roll the dice. It's kind of a random thing, but if you, if you get a six or seven, that particular tissue uh, may be infected in a particular person. And the variability in which cells and tissues are infected, I think explains the, the tremendous variability uh, between long COVID long haulers in their long COVID symptoms. Okay, a little bit on autophagy. It literally means self-eating. This is a basic cellular process. It's responsible for uh, nightly house cleaning and recycling of damaged proteins and lipids. There's two main degradative pathways in our cells. One is this ubiquitin proteasome system, which mainly chews up uh, smaller uh, soluble proteins that are damaged. And then autophagy, which mainly chews up and degrades larger protein aggregates or complexes or even damaged cellular organelles such as mitochondria. Both these pathways are very important for the maintenance of a healthy cell. Uh, and a variety of cell stresses trigger autophagy, lack of nutrients, lack of cellular energy, oxidative stress. Uh, and of course, oxidative stress leads to damaged proteins and lipids and DNA, uh, misfolded proteins, uh, heat stress, lack of oxygen or hypoxia, and certain, you know, too much or too little iron or zinc. DNA damage, et cetera. And autophagy, you know, basically in the case of nutrient deprivation, it can rapidly provide fuel for cellular energy by degrading, uh, accessing lipid droplets, the fats and lipid droplets. And also by degrading damaged proteins, it, the basic fundamental building blocks of proteins, amino acids, become available to build you know, new cellular proteins. It's very important for the quality control of, of uh, damaged organelles such as mitochondria and peroxisomes. And of course, mitochondria are, are the organelles that are the powerhouses or engines of our cells. They, they, they generate, that's where ATP is generated. So if the mitochondria are not working well, uh, you know, we may not have adequate energy to, 
to do things at a cellular level. And autophagy may help protect against neural, a variety of neurogenerative degenerative diseases and dementias. Now, autophagy also is very important for engaging our immune system in response to intracellular pathogens. And so intracellular pathogens can be protozoa, bacteria, or viruses. Uh, re regardless of the pathogen, uh, degradation of, of, of the uh, microorganism or, or the virus can lead to presentation of small protein fragments on the cell surface associated with these MHC class II receptors. And then immune surveillance happens via T helper cells and cytotoxic T cells, and they recruit natural killer cells and basically, by detection of a viral uh, protein fragment on the cell surface, the immune system can kill virally infected cells. Uh, the ubiqu ubiquitin proteasome system also is important in the presentation of viral peptides and immune surveillance. Now, many viruses have evolved strategies to block autophagy, and some even subvert it, subvert it for the replication and, and, and uh, release. Because it, and why? Because it's such an important defense, antiviral defense. So a successful virus has to learn you know, how to deal with uh, <laughs> the major cellular defense of autophagy. And SARS-CoV-2, unfortunately, looks like it is an expert at blocking and manipulating autophagy. It encodes for a variety of, cell, of viral proteins, which expressed in cell culture lead to an accumulation of autophagosomes. And in particular, this open reading frame 3A viral protein blocks fusion of autophagosomes with the lysosome. And the lysosome, that's a critical step because the lysosome has, is an acidic uh, organelle and these autophagosomes, which can contain viral particles or other damaged proteins, need to fuse with the acidic lysosome to, de to degrade their contents. Uh, and then another trick it has is that it has open reading frame 7A, a viral protein that reduces the acidity of the lysosomes. So these lysosomes contain a variety of proteases that degrade the proteins and they need an acidic environment to operate efficiently. So basically, uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection of our cells leads to an accumulation of autophagosomes and prevents degradation of their cargo. Uh, it also produces uh, the, the main viral capsid, nucleocapsid protein, also impairs normal proteasome function. So it's, it's actively blocking both of the major degradative pathways. And by doing that, it's able to evade immune surveillance. And one consequence of impaired or blocked autophagy is that it can be highly inflammatory. Macrophages, dendritic cells, and epithelial cells, such as the barrier cells in our intestines, uh, all, all can be uh, all can be go into an inflammatory state when autophagy is impaired. And basically this slide shows that there's certain components that would normally be degraded by autophagy, including these ubiquitous inflammasomes uh, and damaged mitochondria. And in, so in a healthy cell, it's not inflammatory, but in a virally infected cell, you're gonna get increased 
reactive oxygen species, damaged mitochondria, and you're, you're going to block, if you're blocking autophagy, you're going to get these inflammasomes ac accumulating within a cell. And there's also uh, specific pathogen sensors that can activate NF-kappa-B, and that also upregulates these inflammasomes. And basically, once you get a macrophage or a epithelial cell, an inflammatory state, it leads to uh, increased secretion of IL-1 beta, which is a cytokine, which is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, and increases expression of adhesion factors on the blood vessel cells. So it allows them, you know, encourages certain cells of the immune system to leave the blood vessels and infiltrate into the tissues where, you know, where there's this localized inflammation. Now there's a number of cellular sensors that regulate autophagy. Uh, it can be, this AMPK is a sensor of energy status. So low energy status can inhibit AMPK which can trigger autophagy and things like berberine and metformin trigger autophagy via AMPK. Um, the CERT1 is, there's a lot of talk of, about this in the longevity circles. Uh, when you boost NAD+, plus, uh, it, that can stimulate a CERT1 activity and trigger autophagy. And then there's mTOR, which is the master regulator of cell growth. It's like a, it's like a protein computer complex, uh, sensing a whole bunch of different things and controlling whether a cell uh, replicates, grows, replicates, and divides, or if it stays in a you know, more quiescent state. And actually, when you inhibit mTOR, uh, you know, that's when it triggers cellular autophagy. So when there's abundant amino acids and growth factors, mTOR will put the cell in a pro-growth mode. And it mainly measures leucine and the two amino acids, leucine and arginine. Uh, inhibiting mTOR induces autophagy, boosting NAD plus, there's another way to trigger autophagy versus SIR2 and 1. Okay. Now there's, there's three main types of autophagy. Uh, and it was originally thought like the main type of autophagy, this general or macro autophagy was nonspecific. But as researchers have studied it more extensively, they figured out that there's all these adapter proteins involved. Like autophagy is like the general machinery, but then there's all these ad adapter proteins that can target specific substrates for degradation and uh, for, for engulfment in the autophagosome and subsequent degradation in the lysosome. So it can, it can degrade the main iron storage protein in our cells, ferritin. It can uh, target peroxisomes or mitochondria in the cells. It can specifically target some viruses, some bacteria, lipid droplets, and misfolded protein aggregates. Now, fasting generates uh, at least three types of autophagy, the general macro autophagy, lipophagy, and chaperone-mediated autophagy. So in, in macro autophagy, damaged proteins, damaged mitochondria, et cetera, would be degraded. And in lipophagy, uh, it, it degrades the lipid droplet re, or fatty acid reserves of the cells, uh, you know, because it, it's trying to generate ketones and alternate sources of energy other than glucose and glycolysis. Now, what's intriguing to me is this research report uh, where they, this, this, uh, a group of lipid researchers were looking at 
uh, human cells cultured with SARS-CoV-2 virus. And they were able to show in these high, high resolution electron microscope pictures that if you can see these little black cells here, you can see that the they found the SARS-CoV-2 viral particles associated with the surface of these lipid droplets. Uh, and, and when they inhibited lipid formation, it's significantly inhibited the SARS-CoV-2 viral replication. So it, it's, this is the basis for my idea that the degradation of lipid droplets uh, might uh, via lipophagy might be a more efficient way to degrade uh, virions within our cells and to help reduce viral load. Okay, that's my overview of using autophagy to fight long COVID. Uh, you know, basically, I think that we can fight uh, this, this long COVID and persistent viral infection by periodic short one and two day water fasts, uh, or by using a variety of supplements such as resveratrol to uh, temporarily increase oxidative stress and trigger autophagy in, in, in our cells. So there, there's a number of ways to trigger autophagy. Uh, and I think we, all of them stress ourselves, so I'm not saying we want to do these things on a daily basis. Uh, I'm emphasizing that for safety purposes uh, and perhaps for efficiency purposes, we want to do periodic autophagy. Uh, and okay, that's that's it. Thank you for your time and good day.